go into questions. Uh, Bob and Jesse, you guys want to start us off? Tied up at halftime, going back and forth, just the way that Los was able to command the game from start to finish. Yeah, I mean, he, he, they just to be able to, um, you know, be able to handle handle that and uh, just did so many good things. Him and Jamie, obviously Jamie made the free throws down the stretch, but they both made really nice mid-range shots on that drop coverage. Uh, made a big three, they each made big threes. So uh, uh, I thought both those two, it was very similar to Providence when they ran that drop coverage. And uh, I thought those two guys did a great job. Porter, you talked before the game, you knew about their three-point shooting, how much they leaned on that. It seems like tonight, I know they made some, but it seemed like you guys were able to limit them for the most part. Just what were you guys able to do defensively? Well, I, I think our guys were like, I mean, they had such a respect for them as shooters. I think they were trying to be underneath them. We got lost a couple times in transition, one, one in the start of the second half, one in the corner right in front of their bench. But they're, they're so hard to guard. Um, they run excellent stuff. They space you. They got an elite point guard. Um, they got a power center that can score. Um, but I thought our guys communicated on their switches really well. Um, I thought they did a great job. And we've talked about it in the second half sometimes, especially in this building. Away from our bench, we hadn't been on top of our, our communication. I thought we communicated elite um, on switches with their shooters. Um, I thought we were there underneath them. And uh, I thought our guys did, did, really did a nice job switching and, and being ready to, ready to guard their shooters. We'll go with James and Mason. Porter, Coach Phillips said you were able to, this is a great compliment to you, you were able to get them into a two-man game. Where they just couldn't fire threes all night. Uh, I don't know, I'm sure you, you didn't tell us your whole game plan, but that, you know, I got the feeling that's something you were trying to do. So you guys really did a great job, didn't they? So we have two different ball screen coverage. We have a really aggressive one, and then we have more of a, a drop coverage, which becomes a two-man game. And we've had both of them. We've used both of them. But we've been using the aggressive one a lot lately, and we just made a decision to go to a drop coverage to try to play a two-man game. And they got us early. Got us in a lob dunk. They got us in a – but at halftime, they had eight two-pointers on 21 shots. And that's 16 points in 21 shots. So, like, even though, oh, they got a dunk, they got they – got, we, we were playing the percentages and uh, trying not to get – because I, I just think, you know, Dalen Hall, I think he's one of the best in the country – at finding shooters when, when he gets trapped or when you get aggressive ball screen coverages. I just think he makes the right read more than anybody I've seen. I mean, and we just didn't want to, we just tried to stay away from that tonight. Thanks. You see some growth from Javian tonight, just things not falling early, but he stays in it and he's there at the end. Absolutely. You know, just learned something about both of them. Just kept on telling them both to shoot, you know, and, and uh, it's going to fall. We took, I love it. We took 26 threes. We took as many threes as they did. And we talked about it, and uh, we talked about playing at a faster pace, and we had a great lows to Javion and a, a long, we call it a Celtic pass, to, for a layup in, in, a, in a key moment last, I think, six or so minutes. But, uh, you know, Lowe's, Lowe's missed a couple. I just, it's, I, I love it. One of my favorite plays is I just, we just kept on, don't hesitate, shoot it. We said it the first half, and he literally came down and hit the next one. That was his first one he hit. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can start. To, we started off a cold again. But uh, to hit nine, we, need, we knew we needed to hit some tonight, and we did. We're going to Ryan, then Jake. Pushed out to nine, then they came back at that three, cut it to six, about six minutes left. Against Texas Tech, it, it kind of snowballed. It was everybody, though, that, that kind of contributed. What has the group kind of learned over this last week and a half, two weeks, to be able to respond and, and push that lead straight back out again? Well, we, we talked a lot about a BYU. They, they score in bunches. You can't let your bubble get burst if they hit two threes in a row. you got to keep guarding possession by possession. And we've, we've let our bubble get burst sometimes defensively. Um, but, like, I thought we, 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 I thought we executed really well. I mean, we had a play where they came out and they kind of ran at us. We did one more, one more, and Rivaldo Soros hit a three. We came out of a timeout. We ran a little up screen for Sam, and he got an and one. Um, I thought we did some really good things to keep answering the bell instead of going cold for so long offensively, which we've done. So I think it was a combination of, of um, some execution and making some shots. And, uh, and then defensively, I just, I, I just have so much respect for Mark and what he does, that, that team, I've watched so much tape, they're so good. And for us to, to have that kind of a defensive performance, uh, we needed it in, in, on this night. Okay. Quarter, from that standpoint, what, what's it been like preparing for new opponents within the league and, and then Watching them, you know, have some success and, and just the, the increased level of overall challenge in the league. Yeah, so I, I think the four teams and we haven't played Houston, but I've obviously seen them. Yeah. So we played the other three and just 
I mean, not missing a beat. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like they've raised their, raised their level. You know, just playing at Cincinnati and seeing how physical they are in Central Florida, an elite defensive team. Everybody's like elite defensively. And so when, when you add new teams to this league, you know, there was 10 teams last year and they were all like in the top, I don't know what the number was, 40 or 45 in defense. So when you add four teams, they're like, are you going to guard? Those four teams are almost, I mean, Houston and BYU are like right there in Cincinnati. Everybody's right there, Central Florida. They're, they're elite defensive teams. So I don't think they've missed a beat. It's still one of the hardest leagues to score in. Um, but in terms of your question about, about preparing, uh, you know, BYU is, is very hard to prepare for because there's no one you can like plug off of. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you're preparing, you can plug off him. You can't plug off of them all. And you have to make a decision about your offensive rebound. You have to get back. They push it so fast and they find each other. So if, you have a, if you're not talking and getting back in transition defense, they make you pay. So it's just a very unique um, with that many shooters and that many passers, and uh, they're, they're smart, and uh, it was very, uh, it was unique. But in terms of the four teams, elite defensively coming right into the Big 12. Yeah. Okay. We'll go Chris, then TJ. Yeah, Porter, Lois had such a big smile on his face during that. You looked overjoyed, high five in the fans. How much did you guys and you personally just need a night like tonight? We did. I think, I think we're all trying to, to, to stack wins. You're trying to go on one game win streaks in this league. And, uh, you know, you know that it's opportunity. You know, we lost a tough one. At, you know, we, we had a good road win at Kansas State. We turn around and don't play well at Central Florida. And you turn right around and you've got an opportunity to play the number seven team in the net. That's opportunity. So that's as daunting as this league is, there is opportunity. I mean, the opportunities are hard, but there is opportunity. And I think our guys knew that. They absolutely knew it. They knew it was a big win. They knew. You know, they knew they uh, had a great opportunity tonight here, um, here at home. Peter? A lot of talk about shooting slumps or poor free throw shooting. You could shoot 60% in the second half and you know, the 85% from the free throw line. Is it nice to close the game out that way so we're not talking about the other stuff? No way. That, that's a great to talk about. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, so I appreciate you bringing that up. It's, uh, it's good to talk about that because those guys stepped up and uh, – and, and made their foul shots and, and, and stepped up made some big shots. Made some big shots. And, um, you know, I, I said it earlier. I said, it, you know, the old Brad Stevens quote, you know, you can analyze a lot of stuff, but it's a shot-making game too. And uh, so especially when there's more made of shot-making and free throws, sometimes that becomes big. So it's credit our guys for just getting in the gym, repping it out, believing in themselves, and staying with it because uh, I said all along they can shoot, and it was great to see it go in tonight. We've got time for probably a couple more questions. We'll start with Tom. Yeah, Porter, you mentioned the opportunity with you know, BYU coming in as at number seven, but what does it say about this team to kind of pick itself off the mat after how the last couple of weeks have kind of been a rough stretch overall? This team has responded off the mat a lot. I mean, we, we, we lost two, um, and then what did we win at Cincinnati, and then we, we, we lost, you know, some of them we came back and we win at Kansas State. You know, we bounced back after tough losses, and, uh, you know, it just – I said it's just so hard to get too high or too low. Like as high as we were leaving Manhattan, Kansas, you know, last week, we were that low leaving Orlando. You know, it's, and it's just you got you can't get too low. We, we 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 came back from that trip. We were on the plane talking as we walked off the plane. We're like, hey, we got to turn around. We got to meet Sunday. You guys, we got to meet tomorrow. We got back late Saturday night. We got to meet tomorrow. We got to prepare for BYU. And the guys' prep was awesome. They were so locked in Sunday. And uh, we needed that prep Sunday. And uh, they get a well-deserved day off tomorrow. Okay. Any additional questions for Coach? Okay. Thanks, right. Coach.